the water, Barakatha, Kahalayumla, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakhakwadash, double honors to the apostles and others of great millstone, Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly, and Shalom to the Akwab, which is the women believers, Shalom to you. He said, They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. What is plain? The truth. The truth is straightforward. And a lot of people can't handle the truth. <clears throat> See, once you, you've been lied to your whole life. You've been indoctrinated by the serpent. <clears throat> we all have. Before we came into the truth, we was indoctrinated by Satan. So, overall, we understand that the Lord gives the people the ears to hear and the eyes to see. But our job is to warn you. And it's up to the Lord to seal the sayings of his word because he used us as his mouthpiece. So the word is plain, man. It's no gimmicks. You got a lot of people who um who use gimmicks to get people to follow them that's why i know that great millstone is the men of the lord number one they didn't the, they're the number one most hated group and the scripture said that that would be the case read john 15 and 15 on down and also the lord said that the elect will be a small sanctuary wherever they are scattered and that's ezekiel 11 and 16. So you got people, you know, Hebrew Israelites who get um, a lot of views. They got popularity. They use a lot of gimmicks. They like to rap, you know, have parties and cookouts and things like that. So that gravitate people in the world. Now, the truth, like I said, well, actually not what I said, what the scripture says, it's straightforward. It's plain. It's very clear. And there's no gimmicks to it. So I want to look up this word plain. And it's nakak. And it's, look at that, straight, right, straightness. Be in the front of. When you be in the front of, as the scripture says in Proverbs 22 and 3, it said that a prudent man foreseeth the evil in height of himself and the simple pass on in his judge. So when you foresee of something, you are in the front of it. So a wise man received the straightness of the word, the plainness of the word. And the scriptures also said this. So from here, let me get this. I'm going to start from two. So it said, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Hamashiach. Going into Revelation 14, these are they who wasn't defiled with women, which is the philosophies of the world. Now, we all was defiled by women before we knew the truth. But you got people who actually came into the truth, got offended, fell out and you know, went back into their old vomit. So you defiled now. Now you either went back to Christianity or you're a straight atheist now. So that happens. It's a scary thing to fall into the hands of the Lord, man. So, you know, this truth is very plain. And you got a lot of doctrines out there. But let me read three. It said, <clears throat> But I fear lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. Let me see what this subtility. I want to see what it says. Craftiness, cunning, sp specious or false wisdom in a good sense. Prudent skill in undertaking and carrying a, on affairs. Because literally what Satan, what, oh, I said what um, Satan, <laughs> literally what the serpent told Eve. Is that if you take a bite of this philosophy, you're going to be just like the most high, which ain't true. All right. Now, of course, 
See, now I'm about to get into something different. That wasn't supposed to be part of the video, so I'm going to summarize it because we're going somewhere else now. Now, in all actuality, the Lord wanted that to happen. All right. The Lord wanted us to know good and evil because how can you be a judge only knowing one side? But um, but the point is, is that that's how these philosophies is. So Eve and Adam, they only knew one side at that time. So the other side was they was curious. They was simple. They was naive concerning evil. All right. So they wanted to see what that was all about. So just like people in the world, when they hear the truth in a straightforward and plain, it's boring. So they they still searching for, you know, satisfaction. So the philosophies is beguiling you, it's deceiving you because it's catering to your flesh. And then once you like something, now you're trying to retain the truth that you have gotten and then trying to mix it with something else. Because you will see Hebrew Israelites out there, you know, who preach, you know, Yahweh Shai. But then they remix in the doctrine that caters to the flesh. And the scriptures talks about, um, hey, the spirit is like the wind. So hopefully you following. It's that. Can't remember where it's at. Uh, nope. So, there we go. So, it says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Going back to the first um scripture, man, this truth is plain, but people are not satisfied with the plainness. Because literally, the doctrine is this. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We lost our way. We sinned against the Lord. The Lord put curses on us. We are still under the curses. The Lord gave us a way back 2,000 years ago. But we still had to fulfill the prophecies that was going to happen to us. When Yahweh died, which was, they say, 33 A.D., what happened uh, 37 years later, 70 AD, all right? So Yahweh already did his job. He died on a cross for us to give us a provision for us to be reunited back to the Father. But we still had to go through 70 AD and then eventually to the transatlantic slave trade, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. So... Then after you find that out, then from that time on, we was going to be in a dead state. And then after the Lord sent down the Holy Spirit, because he was going to wake up particular men. Then those men was going to teach other men. And then now you have men out here that have entered into the great men's labors. And that's when you go to Ezekiel 37, the dry bones. You know, who got the skin over the bones and the bones united to, you know, the sinews and the flesh went over it. See, that's your identity. The breath is the 100 percent understanding. So you have a lot of people who have the identity. They say, yeah, I'm a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of so and so. But they don't got the 100 percent truth. 100 percent truth. With the icing on the top is you cannot be saved by anything but faith. But within the faith is a certain way that you walk. That's what people don't get. So you will hear that you cannot be saved by the law, that you only can be saved by faith. So a wicked person, as I say in Ecclesiastes 32 and 17, a sinful man will not be reproved but find an excuse according to his will. So they hear that scripture and they be like, well, I can't be saved by the law. So what's the point of keeping it? Which is wicked as hell. So the point is, is that Yahweh Shai and it's all about Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is our savior. That's what his name means. He saves, he delivers. Yah is he. Yahweh Shai is salvation.
deliverer. All right. Or he saves whatever way you want to put it. So the thing is, is that but faith is an action word. So when you hear these type of things and you realize that, as I say, in Matthew three and 16, he said, well, um, John said that is one come mightier than I, that I'm not even worthy to, you know, latch his shoes. And he's going to try you with fire and water. The fire is the trials, the vexation of the spirits that you go through, you know. So it, it, it gets hard out here. <laughs> All right. The truth is not easy, but that's the straightforward of it. See, you got a lot of Hebrew Israelites out here who's um, tremendous thou their way to seek love. Jeremiah 2 and 33. You know, they're trimming their way to seek love. They're not telling you the 100 percent truth. Number one, they offended. That's why you don't hardly ever hear about these other Israelite groups prophesying about the downfall of America. Talking about. The MOTB talking about Jacob's trouble. This is all the straightforward truth. Then when you get people who get offended. Then you tell them why. Like you sin against the Lord. This is the reason that these things happen unto you. They get offended instead of repenting and trying to, you know, go into the way of the Lord. They just complain and then and, and, and nothing never works out for them. But let me finish this scripture. So it said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I just want to see. Having itching. 2833. Nathan. Nathan. So it says. To scratch, tickle, make to itch, to itch, desirous of hearing something pleasant. And that's what our people love. Don't prophesy to me real things. Prophesy to me smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Isaiah 30 and 9 and 10. You know, so people really don't like the truth as the saying in the world, which is one of the few sayings that's right in this world. The truth hurts. See. That's why the Holy Spirit is very important. And the Holy Spirit have one attribute, which is the most important faith. See, when you're going through something and you have faith, it keeps you grounded. Like I always use this analogy. I think I just said it on a video last video I did. Um, when you're in the gym and you're trying to gain strength, you might be an athlete or you just want to look good. You want some muscles. You in there ripping your body, you know, even though you sore as hell, but you want to look good. You want to get strong so you continue to keep going. It's easy to be like, you know what? This shit ain't for me. I'm sore. I don't like to feel this way. I'm going to quit. But see, when you have faith that if you continue to keep doing this, is you're going to reap the benefits. You continue to keep doing it. So that's what it is. So when we heard this word. As the scripture said, let me let me get the famous scripture. It said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I want to see. Is any important words to get? Uh, let's see. They follow. Strong's G 190. Akalutheo. 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 And it said to follow one who proceeds, join him as an attendant, accompany him to join one as a disciple, become or be his disciple side with his party. But see, the reason that we, as the scripture says in Matthew 13 and 16, bless are your eyes for they see, bless are your ears for they hear. So we heard the voice and the voice did something to us. Hebrews 4 and 2, matter of fact, let me get it. So it says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So in conclusion, you know, going back to um, 
the first scripture that I started off with. Like I said, the spirit like the wind, so hopefully you're following. I didn't have no lesson together. I just had this scripture. Um, so anyways, um, <clears throat> so it said, they are all plain to him that understand them and right to them that find knowledge. Now, the only way that that can happen to, to an individual is the Holy Spirit. John 14 and 26, I will send you a comforter and they will abide with you forever and you should know all things. All right. So when we heard this word, it did something to us. It, it lit a light bulb in our, in our hearts, you know, and, um, but the truth is very straightforward. It could really be offensive. Blessed is he whosoever not offended in me. Um, when you talk to Jake, Jake really is offended, even though they act like they're not. Because as soon as the word come out, they always buck up against it. So that's you being offended. You tell them about who we are and they buck up against it. They want to save everybody, but they ain't even fucking saved. You tell them um, about, you know, the curses that's upon us. And, and it's clearly easy to see they they want to be skeptical about it they want to have discrepancies i don't know i don't know dog i don't know you know we're the only people who fit these curses you know but the point is is that the truth is straightforward and it's plain to see the man who speaks it makes it plain and i'm ending on this scripture It says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and give them warning from me. I want to see what it says for warning. Now, when you warn somebody, you warn them from danger. And it's Zahar. To admonish, which is a stiff warning. Warn, teach, shine, send out light, which is the truth. All right. Scripture said that um, you are the light of the world. In the salt of the earth. Matter of fact, I think I butchered that scripture. I know it's 5 and 14. So it said, yeah, ye are the light of the world. A city that set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light unto all that are in the house. And that's the elect. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. All right. So, Zahar, and it said, to monish, warn, teach, shine, sing out your light, be light, be shining, to be taught. See, you have to have the ears to understand without being um, sensitive. I always say this, my new saying, when you are logical and not emotional, things makes more sense. But you got too many emotional people in this world. So it said, be admonished, teach, warn, send, uh, to shine, send out light. So really, when it goes into the warning aspect of the scripture, it's talking about sending out the truth and also a warning. See, the truth, that's the gospel of the good news. Because here's the thing, the scripture that I always quote, it's probably my favorite scripture now outside of Revelation 21 and 4. But Proverbs 23 and 18, for surely there is an end. And your expectations shall not be cut off. That's the good news. But we have to go through that fiery trial. That's the straightforward truth. You're going to go through things in this truth. You're going to feel like you want to give up sometimes. All right. But a lot of people want to hear smooth things. No, everything is going to be all right. You're just going to ride off in the sunset into the kingdom. You don't got to go through Jacob's trouble. You don't got to go through nothing. That's what people want to hear. But what the fuck do that do for you when... The prophecy smack you in your face. All right. So the truth is plain. And if it ain't for you, it ain't for you. Move the hell on. All right. We don't wake up nobody. The Lord give up the increase. All praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Al-Bashai, and Shalom.